When the giant fish leaves the sky, it is time to travel. Alex and I thank you for the invitation to attend this conference. Let us first give you a brief introduction to the astronomy of the Burong clan. They lived in southeast Australia around a saltwater inland lake, which they called Dirol, which means in English language, night sky or space. This lake has wonderful reflective qualities, as seen in this time-lapse sequence created by Alex at the Lake Tyrrell Star Party in October 2010. This was where we met and where Alex proposed placing Burong astronomy into the Stellarium computer program. So let Stellarium introduce you to the ancestral totemic figures in the Burong night sky. Firstly, what is seen in our northern sky. Remember, this is how we see the sky in the southern hemisphere. Yuri is the fantail cuckoo and Wanjul is the long-necked tortoise. They're seen in Gemini as Castor and Pollux. The cuckoo and the tortoise are hunters on the lookout for Purra, the red kangaroo, which they find in Capella. As these ancestral figures progress from east to west, the hunters are followed by Torchin Boinjura in Coma Berenices, then Mapin Kuruk and her daughter Witguruk in Bootis, Nailoan, the Malifal Megapode in Lyra, Tochigil, the purple crowned lorikeet in Aquila, and Ochikut, the giant fish in Delphinus. Then comes a series of people. Lan and Kruk, the young women beating time on their rolled up possum skin cloaks. Gelalek, the song man clicking his boomerangs in time to the chant. And finally, Kulk and Buller, the young men dancing in the belt and scabbard of Orion. Now we look to see what for us is in our southern sky. First we have the dark patch in the Milky Way that is Chingle, the man-eating giant emu which we depict as an emu progenitor from the days of the megafauna of 26,000 years ago. Then there is Bunya the possum who climbed the tree, Crux, to escape the clutches of Chingle. Then the wife of Wa, the crow, in Eta Carinae. Then Wa himself in Canopus. Almost opposite Crux in this great circle is Yeradet Kruk, the owl at Nightjar, whose special feminine qualities make her the totem for all the women in southeast Australia. The clouds of Magellan are Brolga, man and wife, known as Court Chin. Chingle's legs end in Scorpius, where two more ancestral figures reside. One that includes the red star Antares is Juit, the red rump parrot. The other is Carrick Carrick, the Australian kestrel, at the other end of Scorpius. The central sky is dominated by Warapil, a chief of the Nurumbungutjas, who made all things, including the ancestral figures, and he is based in Sirius. His wife is to be found not far away in Regal in Orion. Warapil is brother to Wa, also a chief of the Nurumbungutjas. Canis Major is also the home of the tiniest of the Burong celestial features in Energonite, the Jackie Lizard who does battle with Mityan the Moon to protect the virtue of one of his wives. An Ergonite wins, and Mitchin has been forced to wander the heavens ever since. There are other dark patch features that we find in Waring, the Milky Way. One is the dark line that twists and turns like a river winding across the plain. This is Millie, which we know today as the Murray River. There is also the figure of Mindy, the giant snake whose qualities are both good and evil. Mindy the Good is the rainbow serpent associated with water and fertility. Mindy the Bad is the authority figure who dispenses justice and penalises clans for their misdeeds. 
When smallpox raged through Victorian tribes, they said it must have been Mindy being unhappy with the way the people were behaving. At this point, it is important to state that this interpretation of Burung astronomy is a reconstruction. An Englishman from Warwickshire wrote down their astronomy and gave an address to the Philosophical Institute in Melbourne in 1857. This address was printed in their annual transactions and I used it in the 1990s as a postgraduate research topic. We don't know what happened to the Burong clan. They may have joined the mainstream or they may have been killed in the race to take over Aboriginal land during the 19th century. What we do know is that we have not yet met anyone who identifies as a Burong descendant. And what we present today is in respect for and in memory of that wonderful family who told their astronomy to William Stanbridge, the Englishman from Warwickshire. Now what happens when Ochukut, the giant fish, leaves the sky and sets with the sun? Members of the Burong clan know that at this time of the year the onset of summer has caused the river temperature to rise and by the time Ochukut leaves the sky the cod, cod will have spawned and it is now time to visit their Dadi Dadi relations who live on the river to the north and be invited to feast on the cod. So they prepare for their visit by gathering gifts and trade goods like red ochre, which is found in Burong country, and which is highly prized. They travel at night because now summer has arrived, the days are too hot for the little ones. So what do they see in the night sky as they walk northwards? They see Lan and Kuruk in what we call the Pleiades, the young women beating time on their rolled up possum skin cloaks. They see Gelalek, the song man in Taurus, clicking his boomerangs and making the time as he chants the words. And they see Kulkan Bulla. Kulkan is young man and Bulla is two. So there are two young men dancing in Orion and Stanbridge tells us that one is in the belt and the other is in the scabbard. So that's where we looked for them and found them. And why are they in the sky? Because this is what the Burong people will do at night with their cousins on the river, especially the night of the full moon. They will dance, they will sing and they will beat their time on their rolled up possum skin cloaks. It takes three or four days to get to the river, so they walk through sunrise to a shady spot with water and stay there until sunset when they resume their journey. By now they are travelling through Malifal country of Nailoan and these birds have started their egg laying. So as they walk they will keep a lookout for the nesting mounds where they will find their eggs. And the women place some of the, some of the eggs in their dilly bags to give to their cousins on the river. And they look for Wanjul in the night sky because he also lives on the river and is good to eat. Neither the cod, Panjal or Wanjul the tortoise live in their lake because it is too salty. So the Burong look forward to these items in their annual visit. Wanjul lays eggs which hatch out at the height of summer and when the Burong see the hatchlings they know it is time to return to their home country. By now marriage arrangements have been negotiated, ceremonies completed, gossip exhausted and the young men need a break from their exertions on the dance ground. On the return trip they face a night sky that rotates, we would say, clockwise. All the southern totems are in the sky all the time but sometimes they're hidden in the treetops. The adults tell the story of Chingle harassing the neighbourhood by lying in wait for passers-by and grabbing them and eating them. And Bunya, the ring-tailed possum who put on a brave face and challenged the man-eating emu, but faded at the critical moment, dropped his spears at the foot of the tree 
and scampered up to the top, where for his cowardice he's been fated to live in the treetops ever since. And Wa, being smart, went off to look for a warrior team to dispose of Chingle. He found the brothers Boom, explained the situation, offered to show them where to find the man-eater, and he would carry their spears for them to Chingle's hideout. When they got there, Boom Boom challenged the giant emu and threw their spears. With a roar, the huge man-eater got up and took off with his brothers in pursuit. In their chase across the country, all three of them created the creeks and gullies, the hills and the plains and the lakes, all the features in the landscape. Their strategy was to exhaust the emu and when it had to rest, to creep up and spear him at close range. However, the brave warriors' brothers were just as weary as Chingle, and when he flopped down exhausted, they did too. The young girl, Wheatcrook, saw what happened, picked up a fallen spear, plucked up a nearby bush, and began to stalk the dozing giant. She held the bush in front of her, and if the giant emu looked up, she stopped, stock still, and didn't move until the giant lowered its head and started dozing again. When Wheatgrook got close enough, she plunged the spear into Chingle's heart and killed him. Now women are not supposed to use spears, only digging sticks, so the brave brothers were angry with Wheatgrook. However, on reflection, they decided that she had contributed to, to the demise of the dreaded beast and to the well-being of the community, so they forgave her. The warrior brothers then stripped off all the feathers from Chingle and placed them in two piles. One pile became the much smaller male emus of today and the other pile became the females of the same size. They were to lay several eggs now instead of the one the Chingle laid which reproduced a man-eater each generation. So the children learned from this story how to successfully stalk and kill an emu, that eating people brings death, and that in times of emergency gender roles can be crossed. And as they progress they know exactly where they're going. Home is directly under the central point of the sky's rotation, what we call south. It's, an, it's easy to find by estimating the midpoint between Yerdet Kuruk and the tree up which Bunya climbed to escape Chingle, which we know as Crux. This midpoint can be confirmed by making a path from Warapil through Wa to cross the pathway from Yerodet Kuruk to Bunya's tree. Home is under that midpoint which we know as the South Celestial Pole. And now that they are safely home, we can conclude our presentation. Alex and I would like to thank the Berenji Gadjan Land Council for encouraging us with the Stellarium project, and the wildlife artist Janet Matthews, and the Aboriginal artists Esther Kirby, Alison Hart and Tommy McRae. We give particular thanks to the late David Maljali from the Kimberley in North West Australia for his insights and for telling us that everything on the ground is in the sky, from which we understand that not only all the birds and animals are there, but the seasons, the totems, the law, the morals, every part of life is there in the night sky. We thank William Stanbridge for his friendship with the Burong family and for his lack of prejudice which was so prevalent among his peer group. We thank Alex's design team in Ukraine who have made this presentation possible and for us such a memorable one. And we thank the organisers of this conference for choosing a theme that we could respond to so readily. Thank you.